Hello, students. Um, I thought it'd be easier this week to start off with uh, just a brief video going over some of the advice I have about specializing in various aspects of the field of anthropology. And the reason why I thought I'd start with the video is that I do have some specific tips about how to navigate through our program here at STSU. And I will show you some of those things at the end of this video and, and a lot of the links that you're gonna be reading for today's, uh, for this week's module will be pointed towards those specific resources. That all sort of foreshadowing a topic that I'm gonna come back again, which is how to plan out your schedule and how to choose classes. So those things are obviously uh, tied together because um, in order to specialize, you do need to choose your training opportunities with a goal in mind. So it has to be sort of goal oriented rather than just trying to fill out a schedule to meet requirements. So that's a little foreshadowing. Let's, let's back up a little bit and let's just talk about why anthropology is a discipline that you might want to specialize even more within. So we, as we mentioned last week, are kind of an interesting discipline because we span a very wide gamut of approaches towards studying the human condition, from the very quantitative to the very qualitative. And again, we are always a little bit more data oriented than the, you know, the breadth of the humanities, like creative writing and art and that kind of stuff. And we're always a little more introspective and philosophical than the, the super hard sciences like physics and chemistry, etc. And that really sets you up well for a broad range of talents. I mean, it's good to have a broad base. It's important to have a broad base, which is why we have the core course requirements in our program and many other anthropology programs are similar. We say we want you to get a broad base to understand all the aspects of how anthropologists as a holistic community study humanity. So you take your 100 level uh, preliminary courses and then you take your 300 level courses, the four core courses that give you that really solid, solid grounding. Now after that, however, most anthropologists will specialize to some degree or another. Now, don't get me wrong, there are always people who prefer to be generalists, who want to dibble and dabble into all the different areas. But because anthropology is so broad, that becomes more and more difficult, sort of the further uh, you go along, to maintain enough of an expertise in all the different areas so that you can do them all competently. It's not impossible to do. I do know a few uh, Renaissance women and men who, who can do that, who can go from an archaeological dig to uh, a genetics laboratory and to an ethnographic field site and feel comfortable in all those uh, situations. Most of us, even those of us who've made it all the way to being a professor of anthropology are not that comfortable in the other subdisciplines. It's, it's a fact because we have specialized. So let's think about how you can start to figure out what it is that you like best about anthropology and how you can start to cultivate some sort of specialty. So the first thing is we all are now familiar at this point with the four general subfields of uh, physical anthropology or biological anthropology, archeology, span uh, cultural anthropology or social anthropology and linguistics anthropology. Now in, at SDSU, our strong suite is not linguistic anthropology. We do have a very strong linguistics department when they have a new uh, major called language and culture. But in our anthropology department, um, beyond the two classes, Anth 304 and Anth 410, we really don't have a lot of uh, coursework for you to specialize. So if linguistic anthropology is something that you want to do, you're going to have to look outside of our specific department to get enough expertise. Now most of our students, and I think this is a broader trend in anthropology, um, linguistic anthropology itself is definitely sort of falling off to the wayside a little bit, um, being replaced with a more modern general linguistics field, which is often housed uh, in linguistics departments separate from anthropology, but informed by anthropology. Now, the other three subdisciplines are, um, certainly you can just specialize in any one of those, sort of writ a little larger. You can be an archeologist or a cultural anthropologist or a physical anthropologist, but you often wanna specialize even more than that. 
what that means is that you have to start to narrow down in your focus. Um, and our upper division coursework is arranged in tiers to allow you to start to do that. And you can kind of think of it as your junior year, your 300 level courses. That's how you start to figure out, okay, which, you know, which of these subfields really is starting to feel right for me. And then you take a few more of those things, you get into the 400 and then eventually the 500 level courses. And that's where you get to figure out your very specific uh, arenas within the sub-disciplines that you've chosen to, to sort of start to get your expertise. And then if you choose to go on, get a master's degree or even who knows a PhD, you can specialize further at those levels. But at the undergraduate level, you need to at least be picking one or maybe two of those subfields, the general three or four subfields of anthropology to focus on. And you're going to want to pick a certain suite of skills within the subfield or subfields that you've chosen um, to get a little bit of additional specialty training. Okay. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying that you're going to want to do this is that you're going to want to not only just show that you have that broad base to be broadly applicable in a, in a, in a marketplace, but you want to show potential employers or grad schools or whatever you're going to do that even if you don't end up doing the specialty in anthropology that you, you know, don't do it explicitly in your job, that you have the capability of acquiring specialty skills and you can always spin your specialty skills to fit a new situation. So let's give an example of that. You know, I'm an archeologist, so my example is gonna be from, from uh, archeology span as a subdiscipline. One of my uh, skill suites that I have cultivated over many years is in geographic information studies or geographic information science. It's the class I teach on that's called computational archeology span and, and it's is using computers and specifically spatial applications in computers. So think of it as fancy electronic maps and doing a lot of analysis in the computer through a, a spatially explicit set of operations in this software, okay? So GIS is a, is a very broadly uh, desired skill suite beyond even just archeology. span It's desirable within archeology, span but you can use it in any of the other subdisciplines, and you can use it in a, a wide variety of fields outside of anything explicitly anthropological, construction, um, crime scene analysis, um, government and NGO work, uh, uh, climate science, geology, <laughs> you know, you kind of name it. There's always something spatial, something that you want to have on a map. And if you specialize in GIS within archeology, span it's not a broad step to say, well, I have the skill of GIS and I can use it in this new arena. Um, it's just a matter of changing the inputs and changing some of the analyses and some of the goals of those analyses, right? And so the same thing, let's say with ethnographic uh, methods, um, let's say you specialize in uh, participant observation and you're doing it in, the, in school and it's you know, living with traditional societies, still living in, um, or traditional life ways in other parts of the world, that may be what you study it, you know, in the books and that kind of stuff. But you can then turn around and say, I have those skills in participant observation. Let me come to your company and I'll do an ethnogra ethnography of your company and I'll tell you what your uh, company culture is and how you can then maybe engineer, model it, or change it if you would like, right? And that's actually a field that cultural anthropologists do get into, which is uh, corporate ethnography. Um, and it's exactly that same idea that you take your skill that you honed in your specialization in anthropology, and then you market it to specific niches, right? So maybe that's not what you want to do, either of those two cases, but you can get an idea that that is uh, a useful thing to say, I have this concrete skill specialization, and I spent extra effort to learn this and I can show you how I can take that skill and apply it to whatever job, right, that I'm applying, that you're applying for at the time or in any other arena, okay? Um, so, so that's a couple of examples. Let's talk about uh, some of the expertise that we have here at SDSU. And that's just sort of a first little word of caution is that where you go to school, does kind of push you in certain directions because the faculty 
have specific expertise. If you want an expertise, you want to gain an expertise that is not uh, something that the faculty in your department currently has, you can do it through outside study and especially going on specific field schools or engaging in specific internships is a good way to do that. But you have to be a little bit more independent, right? Um, so it's a little bit easier, at least at first, to look at the specialties that are, exist within the faculty. And then from there, choose things that seem interesting because those are the classes that are gonna be offered. And those faculty may have labs um, or other research projects that you can then get involved in. And it's definitely a little bit easier on you because the, there's tie-in. The faculty have some buy-in. They want students to you know, come and help them in their research projects and be in the labs. And those are often in those specialties and they're good ways for you to get those skills. So let me just share my uh, screen real quick. And um, what I'll do is go to the anthropology website here at SDSU, anthropology.sdsu.edu. And uh, again, I said this before, this is a really, what should be one of your first clicks whenever you have a question about courses and uh, you know, other things related to anthropology here at SDSU. Now today what I want you to do the first thing is this is gonna be a link, uh, you know, as you go forward in the, in the week's module. But you click on the people and I want you to just take some time this week to look at all of us faculty and to read very simply our interests, right? These things tell you, uh, sort of written a little bit large what our, what our specialties actually are. So you will see that there are some definite themes and you're gonna get some, you know, uh, pairs of faculty. So for example, here Dr. Lauer has written an environmental anthropology and so has uh, Dr. Riley, right? So you can see that there's some duplication of skills but their, their application areas are very different. Ethnoprimatology and here it's, uh, you know, island and coastal uh, traditional societies and coral reef ecology, right? So there's a, a whole bunch of different uh, specialties in our department and I want you just to take a bit of time to look at those things. And then you can click on each person and you can read a much broader, uh, much more detailed summary of that particular faculty's interest. And here I just want to point out that we have some really wonderful lecturers Lecturers are not full-time faculty, so all the full-time faculty are up here. Uh, the full-time faculty are the ones that have labs and ongoing research programs in general. So if you're interested in that kind of work, um, you want to focus on the full-time faculty. But please don't ignore our lecturers. They have some really great specialties and some really great skills. And even if they don't have ongoing research or labs, uh, they can certainly be important mentors, uh, aspects of your uh, mentorship here at SDSU. And you'll have uh, uh, these wonderful uh, instructors in some of your classes, so you have chances to get to know uh, them better as well. So that's just something for you to help figure out, like, what can I do here at SDSU? The other place where you can look is our actual course list. And so you can go to the courses page. Um, for some reason, this is always a little less up to date than the actual course catalog. So I actually highly recommend instead of going there, going to um, the general catalog at curriculum.sdsu, curriculum services, general catalog. The link will be for this, uh, you know, in your week's module. And you scroll down, individual departments, courses and curricula, and you find anthropology. Now, this gets updated every year with all of our new courses, the description about the major, et cetera, which we'll talk about later. But you can look at the kinds of courses that we offer and you can start to see how you can choose some of these courses to help you specialize even further. So let's say you like biological anthropology, but you really like the study of apes and primates. And so you can see that we have two classes and 355 exploring primate behavior. And then uh, down here we have and 501 primate behavioral ecology. And so you can start to pick out classes that you really want to take while you're here. Uh, and then you can say, okay, that's one specialty I want to do. Also, maybe I want to do um, human anatomy or bioarchaeology. So there we have uh, 360. 
So the Modern Forensic Anthropology and then the companion course, uh, 505, Human Osteology. That's another really great pathway there within biologic anthropology to gain some specialty. Over in archeology, span you know, we have some broad survey courses, the one that I teach regularly, Roots of Civilizations. And then from there, you can start to see how we'll have some specialty classes um, like my computational uh, archeology span class, anthropogenic landscapes. Uh, we're gonna have uh, a couple more show up with real line numbers next year including uh, Paradise Lost, which is uh, coastal, uh, coastal archeology span here in California with some environmental archeology span mixed in, and probably zoo archeology span will show up as a permanent line number as well. Um, and then we often have some additional classes that we, that we offer as 583 or 582 or 483, which are specialty classes. And those are gonna show up in the actual class schedule. So if you go to uh, the class schedule, and here's the pro tip, when you get there, make sure you're logged out of your web portal because if you're not logged out, it won't let you look ahead to the next semester. But if you are logged out, you can see at least one, maybe two semesters ahead, depending. So right now, by default to the current semester, but you can see I already can go and see classes upcoming for spring 2021. I'll hit the update button. And then once it updates, I'll choose anthropology and hit search. And it will literally just show you all of the anthropology classes that we are gonna offer in spring. Now, because it's so early, some of these may change, just a little word of warning, but you can start to look and see what's coming up and then you can start to plan ahead. So let's say for example, um, where was the class I was just talking about? 501, Primate Behavioral Ecology. Now, of course, these have prerequisites, and so you'll wanna make sure you're meeting the prerequisites to get to the 500 level. But you can at least see at least one semester, maybe even sometimes two semesters in advance, what courses are going to be offered, and then you can start to think about how you're gonna get there, what classes you need to take now in order to meet those requirements. And so it's very, very useful to think about that uh, going ahead. Um, here, I just want to point out Ant 583 next semester is going to be the Paradise Lost because it's not quite ready to have its own line number, um, but it still can be offered as a 583 course. So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, I'll just talk very briefly. Let me stop sharing uh, the screen. Very briefly at the end uh, about some other strategies. And again, we're going to touch on these again later in the, in the, in the semester, but internships, uh, special topic studies and field schools. Those are other ways that you can get specialized skills. So beyond just the standard courses that are offered during the semester, um, you can seek out uh, partners in the community that do something that seems like what you want to do and ask and find out if there's internships available. It's going to be a weird year for internships because they all have to be online. Uh, or distanced. Um, so most of the internships that we normally have students go to like Museum of Man or San Diego Archaeological Center. Um, those things aren't really happening in the same way, but you can find them. Uh, and so you can get some specific extra work that way, extra uh, experience that way. Uh, and 499 is special topics research. And you can, if you find a faculty mentor, you can add that as another course and it can count as a methods course. It could count as a uh, elective course, depending on whether you're doing real research or you're just doing research or you're just doing readings with them. Uh, but you can tailor the topic of that to very specific um, in interests. As long as the faculty member is comfortable advising you and, and agrees to that, you can get some additional extra interests that way. And then finally, uh, field schools are really wonderful ways to get some additional expertise from faculty at other institutions because you can always transfer the credits over if you want to use them here or you can take them for no credit, but still put it on your resume, your CV later as a uh, tailored experience. And so you can see the more you start to hone in, the more you can start to sell yourself, not just your broad background, your ability to write across the gamut of anthropological styles, but some really specific marketable skill suites or arenas that you have gained just a little bit more experience in. And you do that here just simply by choosing your courses and choosing your additional extracurricular or uh, transfer in kind of experiences. So hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, we can talk again two weeks from now when we have our next town hall 
um, obviously after we deal with the, the, the discussion about the library from our guest librarian. So um, click through the rest of the links and follow the instructions and uh, we will see you in a week. <laughs>